if a totally disastrous life brings you to a point of awakening now, retrospectively, suddenly it fulfilled a purpose. Suffering in your life, if it still arises, uh, use it so that the ego gets burned up by the suffering, so to speak. The ego gets burned up in this fire of suffering. Now we can call this conscious suffering. That's a very interesting concept, conscious suffering. When suffering arises, become aware of it and accept that it's there. in the form of fear, anxiety, regret. Uh, you have self-pity, you have unhappy sense of self, uh, complaining about your life, many forms of suffering. You've lost things you don't know, things that you had identified with, uh, taken away from you. Who am I now? I'm nobody, I'm nobody. Well, that's great. Be nobody more completely. Realize fully your nobody list, your nobody ness. <laughs> I don't know who I am anymore. I've lost everything. All the things I've worked for, I've been gone. Everything is so pointless their mind is still talking, it's all been for nothing, it's all meaningless, meaningless. This is your mind talking, don't believe in the things it says, but it continues talking. Many humans in this world are suffering from what we could call nihilism. I don't know if you know that word, nihilism. Nihilism means the belief that everything is absolutely and utterly pointless. That's a deep form of suffering, nihilism. It doesn't make what's the point of it all, just this awful life of mine. It's part, the whole world is pointless, it's so awful. And that's a very deep suffering, the total lack of meaning. Everything is arbitrary, random, and meaninglessness is a mental disease that is afflicting millions of humans. It, it's because everybody, the mainstream culture still believes. It's, it goes back to the 19th century. It goes back to Dar Darwin, origin of species, and said life, life evolved, which undoubtedly is true. But he said, life evolved, but the evolution of life on this planet is an arbitrary, random course of events, molecules and atoms at random coming together and forming life forms over millions of years. Random, the, the idea of randomness in the theory of evolution put forward by Darwin and others, the idea of randomness means it, uh, there's no purpose or intelligence behind it whatsoever. It's a random process. In other words, it's the belief that everything, that all life on this planet has no meaning. It just is, is a meaningless conglomeration of atoms and molecules. It's ultimately meaningless. That basically is the underlying assumption behind the theory of evolution that many people still believe. And it has seeped into mainstream culture and even people who have never even heard of Darwin, <laughs> it has seeped into their belief system that we live in a meaningless universe. That's a, before that happened, we had certain religious beliefs. So we had, there was some meaning. 
and all those, a lot of that perhaps was ideological and ego driven. Nevertheless, in the ancient religion, there is the, 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 the access to the transcendent is still there here and there. So there's, there's still, there were still little openings into the transcendent, even though many forms of religion developed into ideological belief systems that strengthened the ego. Nevertheless, religion still carried, or still carry, uh, the, uh, the secret of transcendence is still there hiding within the religions. And that uh, became inaccessible to many humans. So now we have the a pandemic of nihilism. This is one of the pandemics far worse than any physical pandemic that everything, the beef that everything is meaningless. So, and you can have a meaning in your life that is very limited. Like for many people have the meaning, okay, I want to have a career that gives you limited meaning in your personal life. I'm working for a career, nothing wrong with that. I'm working to create a better life for myself and my family. That's also wonderful and great. Uh, I'm, I'm working to achieve recognition in this world, et cetera, et cetera. That's fine too. But at some point, uh, a, a meaning that is purely personal may begin to lose its power. So that let's say you've spent two or three decades working for your career, which is nothing wrong with it. At some point, you may arrive at a point where your career doesn't mean anything anymore, or you lose it that you lose your career and your status, or it is it consumes you so completely that you, you become ill with stress, or in some other way, you turn into something that's not satisfying at all, that actually creates suffering. So something can give you limited meaning for a while, for years, and then suddenly turn out to be ultimately meaningless. So, and some people suddenly wake up and say, all my life, some people fall ill, seriously ill. And then they look back on their life and say, all the, this was so pointless, accumulating possessions. Why did I do that? What was the point in that? All the things that I was so anxious about when they're, now they're, let's say they're seriously ill now. All the things that I was so anxious about that, that were created, what was that? That was so unnecessary and pointless. All the things that I'd been striving for were ultimately pointless. That can be an opening. Suddenly, wow, the limited personal meaning, which was fine, it's better than no meaning at all. To have a, a personal meaning in your life, better than no meaning at all. But ultimately, that that's not satisfying uh, uh, in the long term. You have to go deeper to a deeper meaning that transcends who you are as a person. And that is, am I aligned with the purpose of the universe? That, that is the, the ultimate true meaning. Am I aligned with the purpose? And what is the purpose of the universe? The purpose of the universe is consciousness bringing more consciousness into this dimension. That's the purpose of the universe, bringing more consciousness into this dimension. Am I aligned with that? That's, and it, then if that is the case, if you're aligned with that, you're, you're a bringer of consciousness, a bringer of light, that is the ultimate true purpose. And it could be that your personal purpose and the deeper purpose can go together. That's fine. So you can you can have a career, and yet it's not totally ego dominated. While you are act, active working, you bring in the light of consciousness. You do things uh, in your work that bring more consciousness into this dimension. That's wonderful. You can, so you can have. It is not necessarily a case of either having a career or being aligned with, with 
universal purpose, which is you can bring the two together. That's perfectly, that's, that's the balance between, the balance between being and doing, as I sometimes call it, the balance between being and doing, bringing those two together. But so the, the purpose, there's only one true purpose in your life and that you have to discover that. And that is, am I aligned with the consciousness and am I a bringer of consciousness? Uh, so that's the end of nihilism is that, and it no longer matters your entire past becomes relatively unimportant when you realize the meaning of life is to, to be a bringer of consciousness. Let's say your entire past was one disaster after another. It happens. Some, people, some people's life is like, unfortunately, was like that. Let's say you've, you've even, you ended up in prison because you did one wrong and bad thing after another. And but then you look back in your so-called life and say, my God, that was a disaster. My entire life was a, just a disaster. <laughs> okay. But at this moment, I realize the consciousness that I am. And the, I have all the suffering that I have created for myself and others, all the suffering I have created for myself and others was part of the egoic dream, the delusion, the egoic delusion and the conditioning that I came into this world with. And then you, you awaken at this moment if a totally disastrous life brings you to a point of awakening now, the whole thing was great. Because it suddenly has a purpose. Retrospectively, all the disasters brought you to this moment of awakening. So in retrospect, what was totally absurd and meaningless, suddenly it fulfilled a purpose. The past can suddenly be realized as having fulfilled its purpose by creating the suffering that led to your awakening. <laughs> so there's no regret anymore about the past. It all made sense. So it's, the meaning arises retrospectively. It only remains absurd and disastrous if the awakening doesn't happen. <laughs> then you, or you're trapped in the dreadful dream. Continue, continue to be trapped in it. Wow. So be aligned with universal purpose. The, that is the ultimate purpose. No matter what you do, no matter how it expresses itself through you, that doesn't matter. But re realize that. as, And if you want to look at your life in terms of failure and success, as many people do, uh, is my life a failure? Is my life a success? Uh, how do you, what criterion do you use for failure or success? Do you allow this world to tell you whether you're a failure or success? To a large extent, this world is insane. So are you allowing an insane world to tell you whether your life is a failure or success? <laughs> well, no, if, if, if this world cannot tell you, then what, what is it? Obviously, the only true criterion is whether you are conscious or not in this moment. If you're conscious in this moment, instead of being in, totally immersed in the, con, the, the dream of your conditioned unawareness, the fictitious person, if you are conscious in this moment, then that is the greatest and only true success there could be in this life. Your entire past becomes irrelevant if it has taken you to this point. In that sense, it is relevant, but ultimately it's irrelevant. 
you you are awake in this moment. You represent the awakened state of consciousness in humanity. Well, that sucks. Nothing else is success, if you even want to use the term success. But I would probably recommend even here not to use the term success because that would imply that there's somebody there that says, I have achieved consciousness. <laughs> and again, you would create a sense of another, another conceptual identity in your mind, another form of ego that says, I am conscious, other than and these, all these people are not conscious. I have achieved something. I have achieved awakening. That's a delusion again. Because the I that claims to have achieved awakening is the ego again that, that claims some kind of achievement. The true meaning, you can only awaken if the ego subsides and you become, on the, in, the ego becomes transparent. Then awakening happens. But the, it's not an achievement. There's nobody there to have achieved anything. It's something that happened through you. The ego in some way created it in a negative sense because the ego created the suffering that led to the awakening. <laughs> in that sense, perhaps the ego did achieve it. <laughs> but ultimately, to claim uh, I have achieved awakening is a delusion. It's an ego delusion. So nihilism then is something, it's a disease that, uh, again, uh, a form of suffering that can lead to an awakening. It can also lead to suicide. It can lead to despair until you die. In many cases, it does. It can lead to bitterness and resentment. It can lead to a drug, consume drug to, to desensitize yourself against the suffering of meaninglessness. You take drugs, you become addicted, and this is an epidemic of drug addiction around these days. Um, there's a desperate a very urgent need for the awakening of humanity, the awakening of humans. There's a great urgency now because we're moving into a critical, collectively critical situation on this planet. And that is absolutely necessary for awakening. Nobody awakens in their comfort zone. Nobody awakens when the conditions are, when the, the, your mind might say, these are the optimum conditions for awakening. Nobody disturbs me. I get peace and quiet all around me. No particular worldly challenges to distract me from my meditation periods. Excellent food, everything pure and clean. Two massages every day. Uh, and getting rubbed with essential oils. Fantastic conditions for spiritual awakening. Let's say in, in this spa you, where you pay $2,000 per day for to create, let's say you've won the lottery, so you go to the spa, optimum, fantastic conditions for awakening. Oh. And would you awaken there? You could become very peaceful. It would be just very pleasant, very pleasant. Oh. And, and you would be very much like a, like a plant that grows from seed in a protected environment, like a greenhouse, uh, 
just the right temperature and the plant grows very quickly and blossoms, but it's very weak. The moment the greenhouse, let's say the plant is then put outside, immediately it would shrink and collapse. It hasn't de developed the inner strength to, to exist in, in the real world. So for awakening, the challenges that you experience in your daily life now are actually your best, uh, the optimum way of awakening is to use the challenges that you are facing in your daily life instead of believing, if I could only find an ideal situation, then I would easily awaken spiritually. No, you wouldn't. You would actually, after some initial very pleasant experiences in this imaginary spa, uh, you would actually, your level of consciousness would go down, you would gradually go back to sleep, you go to sleep. It's so pleasant. Ah. Presence, presence only arises when it's necessary, when it's necessary. Nothing comes unless it's needed. It needs to, there needs, needs to be a, a call for it. Uh, in other words, it, there needs to be a gap between the, the current situation and what is needed to remedy the current situation. Uh, Things need to be difficult, otherwise change doesn't happen. <laughs>